I will be analyzing the final battle between Naruto and Sasuke from a comic artist perspective. I recommend that you watch my first battle art analysis to understand my grading system. If you want to see my analysis for the writing of the fight, there should be a card of the video on my main channel. In chapter 694, the first attack in this battle has complete action, starting from them standing as kids and ending with a stare down after the clash. This takes 7 panels. The clash also has a hit mark, the white effects flying out of the clash. This makes an attack more clear and helps to sell the attack. The jump back doesn't have anticipation, but it makes sense in this scenario because they are backing away quickly. The rest of the jump was good. Sasuke's fireball and Naruto's grab both have anticipation and action, but the space and camera aren't too good. Sasuke's fireball panel doesn't even take up the entire top third, but Naruto's reaction gladly takes up the entire bottom. When Sasuke spits the fire and Naruto blocks, the shots aren't close enough to be exciting. Both poses are also pretty unexpressive. A positive is that the black turns into motion lines in almost every action, and there are frequent speed lines. Sasuke's Jidori attack is brilliant though. We get complete action for this. He appears, charges, strikes, and Naruto crashes. The poses of the characters when Sasuke appears, along with being able to see both facial expressions was nice. Sasuke's attack, shot from behind his left shoulder, gives good focus to his attack and also allows for foreshortening. While Naruto is crashing, Sasuke Susanoo is summoned and then fires. It has complete action, but the panels are either very small or the camera is far away. Naruto's orbs don't have anticipation at all and his attacks also suffer from the panel size and camera distance. Sasuke's full Susanoo is great. The pose and space are drawn well. Naruto bringing out Kurama has three panels of anticipation before clashing with Sasuke. The panel of the clash has good space, but the camera isn't close enough for at an interesting angle. It's just shot from above. But the technique that Kishimoto uses is clever. He basically has two layers of the characters with one slightly off center. This creates a blurry vibration effect that perfectly reflects the weight of the attack. The next page is all summarizing, which I hate. There is one panel of a close up of the tail and sword clashing, but the other three panels are just explosions. The whole page was poor, but the next is a beautiful spread. The two avatars have bumped fists and are shot from an anti view with water crashing, similar to the first clash in their first battle. There is no anticipation, but it looks really cool because of the dynamic poses and the immense space. The two stare down and a close up of the fist bump is shown as follow through. More summarizing happens. A close up of their hands clashing is shown during the flashback. The two shout before a close up clash happens on the next page. Kishimoto starts picking up again in the next pages. Sasuke's Chidori and Naruto's Rasengan each have three panels of anticipation, with the last on the double spread, where the two clash, which is a reference to the final clash in part 1. The anticipation and the attack panels all have dynamic poses. This clash is good, but it doesn't look as good as the one in part 1. The white energy and solid black shading make the part 1 clash pop more. The two fade away like in part 1 and the explosion erupts, crashing water everywhere. The two are blown back as follow through in the next chapter. Sasuke Susano transformation happens in three panels, ending on a large panel and a double spread. Naruto's clone jutsu has action and follow through, and also has a panel with good spacing. Sasuke's first attack is messy. It takes up half of the page and has motion lines and hit marks, which are all good, but there is no anticipation. The attack is not clear and it takes a few seconds to understand what's going on and the shot isn't close enough. You could argue that it's supposed to be surprising and show his speed, but Sasuke's first Chidori has the same context, yet had complete action. If the panel looked cooler, like Minato and Naruto's Rasengan's against Tobi and Pain respectively, I might have given it more leeway. Naruto's crash is good and takes two panels. The panel of the three clones winding up to attack is cool, but the shot has four characters and deserves more space. Sasuke's counter to the three attacks are shown up close, in small panels. My only problem is that the third is kinda unclear. The next panel zooms out and shows all of the attacks simultaneously. It's a great idea, but the shot is too far away and like with the first panel on this page, doesn't get enough space required to make it look cool. The circular vibrations and the hit marks are good though. More summarizing happens on the next page. The projectiles have anticipation and follow through, but no action. The explosion looks great. Sasuke begins to charge an arrow in two panels. I feel like the pose and the camera could be more dynamic though. Naruto merging the Kuramas takes two panels. Him charging the Rasengans takes three panels, with the third having an okay pose, but having great space. Next is a parallel two page spread, with each character in the top corner and firing underneath. The two charging is centered at the top. The panel of Sasuke firing takes over half of the page and most of the arrow is drawn in thin lines to mimic motion blur. The pose is also pretty good, so this is a good panel. Naruto is doing the same thing on the other side. His pose is more kinetic, but doesn't have the motion blur on the projectiles. The speed lines with the focal point really emphasize the foreshortening. 
This was a great spread. The panel of the attacks flying is too small and shot from too far away. The two page explosion tries to make up for this and looks beautiful. A page of setting damage is shown before the two fly down and crash in three panels. The next panels don't have very good spacing. They are either too small or shot from afar. The clarity is also decreased by the extremely detailed backgrounds. The part one fight got around this by toning the characters. The shot of the three clones running up is pretty good. It could be closer, but it had good posing and spacing. The three kicking up for an Uzumaki barrage is a big panel, but once again, it could have been shot closer. The kicks could have happened in one panel and the jump in the next. Naruto and Sasuke's clash has complete action and the action looks great. It could be a little closer once again, but the pose and speed lines really sell the attacks. Sasuke's shuriken attack takes five panels in animation-like quality and complete action. His chidori takes three panels of complete action. There is a step, his electric hand, then his strike. His strike is shot from afar to show that he took out two clones, but as you can guess, I would have preferred a closer shot. The poses are nice though. Naruto's next move is paced well, with the first having the clone grab Sasuke, then the real running, then the punch. The second shot has a cool angle, but the punch has a panel that's too small. The pose of the punch and Sasuke flying have very kinetic poses. Sasuke falls in the follow through. Sasuke charges and loses his Chidori in 3 panels, while Naruto's Rasengan has complete action in 4, ending in him falling. Sasuke's kick and punch have anticipation and action. The shot of his kick winding up is good, but the actual kick has a weak pose and is from far away, and not shot at an interesting angle. Sasuke's punch pretty much has the same problems. His beatdown is also summarized. Naruto's headbutt has action and follow through, while his rising is paced in 3 panels. The headbutt is sadly small and far away. In the 2 page spread, the two charge at each other before a bunch of summarizing happens. They are all close ups of attacks, which is better than explosions or showing the sky combined with sound effects, but it's still summarizing, which is lame. When time has passed and they're tired, the punches have anticipation and action, but they are exhausted, so it's obviously not dynamic. Sasuke's Chidori has two panels of anticipation, with the second looking amazing. It takes up half of the page, the shot is close enough, and the camera angle creates foreshortening. Two panels show his Sharingan disappearing, and the third shows the attack approaching. Naruto's uppercut looks cool, but there is no anticipation. The speed lines look like motion blur, and the panel is long, which is a great choice reminiscent of the part 1 fight. Sasuke crashes in the follow through. Sasuke takes two panels to charge his Amaterasu Chidori before leaping. The pose of the jump looks cool, but is far away. The panels with Naruto and Sasuke jumping at each other is laid out so that the position of the panels reflects the position of the characters. That's smart. The poses look good, especially Naruto's. They have speed lines in the background surrounding them, but they leave the center white, which creates great focus. There are then two close-ups of the characters thrusting their jutsus at the screen, like in part 1. The clash takes up the entire next page and rivals the one from part 1. The white energy is on the same level. The characters are outlined in white in a way that's better than part 1. And the messy cross hatching shows off the light source stemming from their palms and looks realistic. Naruto's pose is perfect, but Sasuke's right hand looks a little unenthusiastic. Sasuke has the weaker pose yet again, but this panel is brilliant. If it was a double spread, I'd say that it was easily better than the part 1 clash. An explosion happens in two panels. The characters are sketched from afar, they fade away, and everything goes blank, just like part 1. That's the end of the fight. This fight was visually mediocre for the most part. There are a lot of times where there isn't anticipation, which is disappointing because the part 1 fight had animation levels of complete action. The poses are nowhere near as dynamic. The camera angles are often flat and aren't close enough. The attacks don't have enough room to breathe and deliver the impact that is required. The motion looks great with speed lines and the use of hit marks is an improvement. The panels are nowhere near as clear as part 1. The line work isn't as clean and tones aren't used to provide clarity. There are moments of brilliance here and there though. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out my manga for free online. If you enjoy my content, please consider donating to my Patreon. All important links will be in the description.